so. Thought you might want to know your partner's here. Pizza. It's an all-American breakfast. Just for the autopsy record, what do you mash up in there every morning? Goat's milk. A little black strap molasses. Sea kelp. Lecithin. A desiccated liver. Of course, a good sprinkling of your trace elements and vitamins. Oh, of course. You know something, Starsky? You ought to get into something like this. Make a new man out of you. Yeah, that's what you keep telling me. I'm still holding together pretty good. I don't know. Been looking kind of peaked lately. You never did say why you left the party so early last night. Well, somehow it seemed like the proper thing to do at the time. Time. Oh, my gosh. Got to be at the airport in less than an hour. Look, mm -hmm. tell your partner that I'll see him next trip. And it wasn't at all like those other girls said. Other girls? Yes. They got it all wrong. It's your friend Starsky who's dynamite. But, no, I'm Starsky. He's... Oh, I'm, uh, well, I guess that explains everything. See you next time. Uh, hey, uh, you mind? No. Did I say it right? Perfect. You drank the whole thing. You ever get the feeling it's gonna be one of those days? He's dead. He's five foot ten, about 165 pounds. A uh, 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 blue, blue pants and a black shirt. Go put it on the air. Yeah, you get an ambulance down here. Hey, he's just a kid. You killed a kid. It's Lonnie. He killed Lonnie Craig. The boy was trying to surrender. I saw him. He had put his arms up. Lonnie? Lonnie? Lonnie! No! No! Oh, no! Oh, 
sweet Jesus. Don't let him be dead. He trying to surrender, Eunice. He was trying to surrender, and that cop just shot him down. <laughs> you could have taken you had to shoot yes i had to shoot how many times do i have to tell you there was a crowd of innocent bystanders behind me if that kid had pulled the trigger any one of them could have been killed how's it going how do you think it's going rumbling in the street pressure from the press Starsky, i received this memo from the chief's office captain doby Due to the sensitive nature of today's incident, and to ensure that all the facts of the tragic shooting will be brought before the general public, the department has decided to open the coroner's inquest to all the media, including the live television. What you're doing is throwing him to the wolves. What we're doing is trying to keep this incident from exploding. You want me to read him his rights? Detective Hutchison. Hey, hold it, hold it. I think maybe they're right, Hutch. The sooner this thing's out in the open, the better. Besides, if throwing me to the wolves is what it takes, and let them do it. I don't go down so easy. Captain Doby, I'd like you with me when I read this to the press. I'll be in touch if I need anything else. What they're doing to you stinks. Yeah. Oh, my God. He was 16 years old. He was also an armed felon. Was about to blow your head off. Yeah, I know that. And I did what they tell you to do when I pulled the trigger. But that doesn't change the fact that a 16-year-old kid ain't never gonna grow up. Suspect. Yeah, we got a possible young white boy, 22, with four priors. Name's Joseph Tremaine. There's a fry cook near the dead boy's house. Seems like this Lonnie Craig was a loner. And Tremaine was his only friend. And now he's missing, huh? The sirens and everything around us, it was pretty loud. I could hardly hear myself think. But did you hear or see Detective Starsky try to shout any sort of warning to the fleeing gunman? Yes. Yes, I guess I did. And what did Detective Starsky shout? I think, police, stop. It was something like that. Next witness, please. And we've established through the testimony of others that Detective Starsky first shouted a warning and then he fired a warning shot. Now, Mr. Tidings, what happened next? 
I don't really know anything about any warning shot. I saw one hold-up man running, and the other one, Lonnie, he stopped and turned around with his hands up. Mr. Tidings, in your opinion, was the decedent at that time attempting to surrender? I thought so at the time. Now it's hard to say. I guess I made a mistake. Eunice, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what everybody was yelling at the time. Lonnie wasn't trying to surrender. He was bringing the gun down. I think he was going to shoot that policeman. I'm sorry. You cops think you're pretty smart, don't you? Who is this? Would you identify yourself, please? Oh, you pigs are gonna get to know me. If you let Starsky off for murdering Lonnie, you're gonna get to know me real good. Well, if you're referring to the coroner's inquest, sir, we have no way of knowing what the verdict will be. Verdict? It's a whitewash. Now, I'm warning you cops. If you let Starsky off for killing Lonnie, you people are gonna pay. And pay bad. As you know, this is a coroner's inquest and not a court of law. There is no question in my mind that I can only give one verdict in this case. That the death of Lonnie Malcolm Craig was a death at the hands of another other than by accident. However, in view of the evidence and the concerns, I feel it is my duty to add the following recommendation to this verdict. The killing took place as an act of self-defense, and Detective Starsky in no way overstepped the bounds of reasonable force. On the contrary, Detective Starsky's concerns were not only the innocent bystanders, but also the armed hold-up men themselves have proved commendable. that he gets around, but I don't know what good it's gonna do him. What is that? Trouble with you white folks is you all look alike. <laughs> Muggy, it's important. My partner here isn't in much of a laughing mood today. I see. Well, how about another round? How can I interest you in one of my rare fresh rolls? Maybe some other time. Hey, Starsky. A lot of people watch TV today, and it took guts for you to go through what you did. So don't go spilling them for someone who isn't worth it. Huggy, if a 16-year-old kid ain't worth it, who is?
What do you want here? Help. Stuart, who is it? I had to come to see you, Mrs. Craig. I tell you how sorry I am that it had to happen. I've seen your son's file. I know that up until a year ago, he hadn't been in any trouble. I figure someone had to get to him. Somebody had to put that gun into his hands. I want to get that son. But I'm going to need your help to do it. That's going to make him sleep better. I want to find him for me. I want to find him for you. But most of all, I want to find him for the next Lonnie. This is a picture of the man we believe was involved with Lonnie. His name's Tremaine. He's 22 years old. And we understand that he'd become friends with Lonnie. Good friends. Detective Starsky, I know what my boy had become. A mother loves her child and cares for her child and mourns for her child. But a mother knows what her son is. At least this mother knows. Good folks, huh? Yep. Anything? They know a lot about Tremaine. His cousin tried to break up the friendship with Lonnie about a month ago. Well, that's the beginning. Yep. Cousin gave me a list of half a dozen places Tremaine hangs around. Well, let's get on it. This guy's caused a lot of pain for a lot of people. Yeah. Want to start her up? Mm -hmm. Runs better that way. Oh. Can't understand it. Nobody here called a cop. Check this batch. See if they made a mistake in the address. came in while the coroner's inquest was still in progress. The next one was 20 minutes later, after Officer Tinker had been gunned down, going out on a phony 459. That blue coat I shot this afternoon was only the beginning. Cops like Starsky are a cancer. They eat up and destroy people like Lonnie and... And now you're going to have to pay. Starsky, you pig, I know you're listening. Killing you is too easy. First, you have to pay my price. You've got until tomorrow morning to turn in your badge and resign. I want to read about it, Starsky. 
I want to read about it in tomorrow morning's paper. If I don't, another screw is going to be burned. And then another, and another, and another. Until finally it's you. And I blow you into a thousand pieces. That's why Dan Tinker, a cop I didn't even know, got wasted. We've sent both copies of these tapes over to the linguistics department of the university. According to their narrow transcription of phonetics, we're dealing with an ex-con, white, somewhere in his 50s, originally from Atlantic Seaboard, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. Yeah, that lets out Tremaine. He doesn't even fit that description. No, it doesn't. It only means that Tremaine didn't make the call. But whoever made the call seems to know Lonnie, so maybe he knew Tremaine, too. That's our best guess. Now, the first edition of the morning papers hits the streets at 6.30. It gives us 11 hours to get that killer. There's another way. I can always resign. No way. The police department can't start giving in to terrorists. I don't care what their demands. One is liable to be a whole lot of cops. Wives are going to think differently about that. Every officer going on duty will be apprised of the situation and warned to take extra caution. Uh -huh. And what if we don't catch him? How many more cops are going to get blown away because of me? None. Now, Starsky, the guy that's running around out there has a screw loose. That's not your fault. Now, we've got a lead. It's a white male ex-con in his 50s who knew Lonnie. I suggest instead of sitting in my office talking about it and resigning, you get your cans out there on the street and nail this turkey. OK. Seems like your friend Tremaine has been making a few enemies. Why's that? Well, several... Several unnamed persons say he's been seen at drinking establishments sipping beer and eating chocolate candy bars. Waiting for some chick with a fat purse to come along, head for the jar. He wait, let her put a purse down, pop in, grab the purse, and run like crazy. The guy with Lonnie at the liquor store. He got away with $200. Well, the 24 hours later, he's ripping off ladies' purses? Huggy. He said he's sitting in the bar eating chocolates. Lots of chocolate. Chocolate. Chocolate and a constant flow of cash. I think our friend Tremaine might be a junkie. There's only one way to find out. Cecil. Cecil. Cecil! Open up! Police! Cecil! Hi, guys. Hey, what's the matter? What I ain't done nothing. What do you think, Stars? Watch him with it. Oh, come on, you guys got to be kidding. That's one last chance. Oh, come on. Him. Name's Tremaine. Who do you want to know? Everything. He's a wise guy. Punk who can think of quits whenever he wants to. Now, how much is he shooting a day? Hundred quarter, hundred and a half, depending on the going price. And where do we find him? He's living with a chick, three of white sycamore. Tremaine! I got the front. Maybe not. Why? Huh? 
Did you get a good look at him? Yeah. No, I don't know. He was starting to hurt. He's gonna have to score soon. Oh, look, Narco can't watch every push on the street. You know that. What time is it? It's 1.30. Well, that gives us five hours before the early edition hits the streets. I was strung out as that guy looked. There's a chance that he might have to come out in the open to make a connection. Huh? Yeah, well, Tempest Fugit. What? Time flies. Oh. Got a report a baby was left in your restroom. First I heard about it. Well, I'd better check. about 10 minutes ago. Your friend called again. Said this was number two. That's Jack Forrest. All right, get him out. Uh, hey, uh, don't give your hand. Have huh? you helped enough? This morning, when a mysterious bomb blast rocked an all-night gas station. Police spokesman had no comment as to who might have set the explosion off or why the bomb might have been placed there. Identification of the dead officer is being withheld until notification of the next of kin. So you want to play games, huh? Starsky? What's this supposed to be? My resignation. Just like the man ordered. And if you don't give it to the press, I will. Over my dead body. Hey, how many more cops gotta die before I'm supposed to become expendable? Every man that takes the oath knows he's a potential target. That goes with the territory. And we are not, repeat, not gonna turn the streets of this city over to some two-bit punk. And more important than that, official department policy is gonna be for the time being not to acknowledge the threats or the killings. That's great. Starsky! I know how I'd feel if this were happening to me, but you gotta hold on. Taking up a collection to help out Jack Forrest's wife and kids, you know. How much you got? Keep it. What? Jack's family doesn't need any of your conscience money. Where do you get off with that garbage? Stay out of it, Hutchinson. Hey, Hutch, 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 Hutch. What are you gonna do, Hutch? Punch me out? I hang around this precinct long enough, your pal's gonna get me killed. You know something, Lee? If you used your brain as well as you do your mouth, you might understand what's going on here. Hey, 
he didn't mean what he said. He and Jack Forrest went through the academy. He's still a cop. Yeah, I'm still a cop. Hey, you two! Tremaine's been spotted at the market on 4th and Main. tell you something I don't know. You know. You and Lonnie Craig were friends. You had to have spent a lot of time together. Teaching him how to hold a gun. The right things to say in a liquor store hold up all the important things in life. What are you going to do? Charge me with contributing to the delinquency of a minor? No! 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 Now, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds, Tremaine. And then I'm going to turn around and walk out of this room. After that, what happens is between you, my highly excitable partner here, and him. We want an ex-con, white male. Somewhere in his mid-fifties. You told me, and I told you, I don't know him. But Lonnie did. He probably did. That could be any one of a hundred guys. What are you talking about? Lonnie was a loner. A loner? That'll come as a shock to his customers. His custom. Lonnie was a runner. He was running numbers in the district. Maybe this guy was one of his customers. If he was, I don't know him. You guys know that. Nobody knows the runner's customers except the runner himself. That's how he protects them from getting busted. But you cops. All this time we've been looking for this trash to get the answer. Now we find him, we still don't know. It's him again. Stay with him. You heard me the first time. You guys aren't taking me seriously. All that bull about not knowing who set off that gas station. Yesterday. Oh, we know who you are, you sucker, you two-bit pervert psycho. You don't got the guts to come down here and face me. Starsky. What's the matter, punk? You lose your nerve? You're a dead man, Starsky. Only if you can make me that way. You're the one who wants to cut out all the bull. All right, you're after me. You got me, sucker. You name the time and the place and I'll be there, alone. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Only we're not playing by your rules, Starsky. Not this time. This time it's my rules. And my rule book says when you're going to get it. The right time and the right place. Only I want your resignation first. You got one hour, wise guy. One hour. And I want to see it on TV. Well, this time it isn't going to be a cop who gets burned. This time it's going to be a cop's family. 
Wife and kiddies, maybe an old granny, too. Be seeing you, hero. He didn't stay on long enough to trace it. Starsky are a cancer. They eat up and destroy people like Lonnie and... And now you're going to have to pay. Listen. You're a cancer. They eat up and destroy people like Lonnie and... And now you're going to... There, did you hear that pause? He said Lonnie and, and now. And just before he said and now, it sounded like he was going to say a name, another name. Someone else that um, he thinks Starsky has destroyed? Exactly. And to do what this guy has done, that somebody would have to have been somebody, somebody very close to him, like a wife or a son. Or... Someone that Lonnie Craig reminds him of. Two years ago, McKinley High School. What you got? Give me R and I. You remember our first assignment out of uniform was working undercover for narco at McKinley High School. Yeah, some 19-year-old got busted for doing. Yeah, this is Detective Starsky. Look, I want files on two men, both named Prudum. Huh? The first is Gary Vincent Prudum, deceased. He was stabbed to death in the city jail about two years ago. The other one is his father, uh, uh, I don't know his name. Uh, Ex-con. Ex-con, aged somewhere in his 50s. Uh, no, no, don't stand up. I'm coming right down. Hey, I remember the kid, but what's the old man got to do with it? He just gotten out of state prison a few days before. 15 years hard time. And the kid had been busted six times before for dealing. Probably would have gotten off in a couple of years, but never had the chance. He hadn't been in jail for 36 hours. He was killed in a knife fight. An old man blames you for it. That's about the size of it. I hope this is what you're looking for. Yep, that's what we're looking for. Hey, Starsky, it may not seem like it, but most of the guys are behind you. Thanks. Hey, Bill, would you call parole and get a current address on this guy? Right. Come on. Thank caliber that killed Dan Tinker. Why couldn't he have been here? Well, you got it out of your system. Now what do you want to do? Hello. Starsky. You just ran out of time. The next time you hear from me, one cop is going to be minus a family. You'll never make it, Prudhomme. Ten minutes from now, your face is going to be smeared all over every TV screen and newspaper in the city. You're not going to stop me now. I don't have to. You're dead, Prudhomme. You're dead, and I'm still walking around. Look, I'm the guy you're really after, and my office still stands. You name the time and place, and I'll be there alone. What's the matter, Prudhomme? I can't hear you. How do I know you'll come alone? Because I'd love to burn a bum like you, and I don't need any help to do it. Just like I didn't need any help to take that punk kid of yours. The old zoo in 10 minutes. I'll be there. Starsky, I'm warning you. If I as much as smell another cop, I'm wasting a family, carload of kiddies and all. Even if they kill me before I get you, that's OK, too. Because you're going to have to live with that dead face. 
family on your head for the rest of your life. Where's the meeting? He said alone. Uh, there's no way. I won't allow it. Neither will Dobie. We don't have a choice. No. You're walking into suicide. Hutch, he says he even smells another cop. He's gonna waste a whole carload of kids. <laughs> Once you guys staked inside until you're relieved. Move it. Move it.
Come on, hero, shoot me! What's the matter? Am I too old for you? You only kill kids? Come on, I'm the guy who wasted your big friends. friends from Lonnie's mother. Stopped in to see how she was doing. She told me she had one of these every day. Knowing your interest in nutritional matters, I had her whip up a batch for you to try. You see, Hatch, the problem with you is you have the notion that something's gonna taste rotten in order for it to make you feel good. Well, that will win you the Damascus medal, but it is not, in fact, true. And this is gonna make you see the light. Banana. I can taste banana. Terrific, huh? What yeah. else is in there? Yeah, what is in here? I mean, I could start my day with one of these every day. Mm. Well, there's organic banana, like you said, and then there's uh, natural lemon juice and some unrefined raw sugar, mm. and about six jiggers of dark rum. It's called a daiquiri hutch. Thank you. 